Hey guys, welcome back to another Mama Mondays here on Naturally Page. For today's video, I am going to be sharing my birth story. I have been asked time and time again to share how I actually ended up going into delivery and I'm so excited to share my journey. But if you're new here, I'm gonna ask that you just pause right now and subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. If you follow me on Instagram, you'd know that I worked out for my entire pregnancy and I had a fit pregnancy. If you don't follow me, please just look below in the description box and you can follow me on Instagram. The whole goal of me having a fit pregnancy was so that I would have, well, I really actually wanted to prep my body as best as possible in order to have a smooth vaginal delivery. So I worked out for my entire pregnancy up until week 36 and I really and truly just had a good time in pregnancy. I didn't have any complications, nothing whatsoever. And my doc was pretty confident that, yeah, man, you're gonna have a good delivery. I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be good just because you're working out, everything is good, cool. So week 36 comes and I go in for my weekly visit at that point to my doc. And she says to me, she checks me and she goes, oh wow, cervix is soft. Now, if you know anything about those terms, when they say that your cervix is soft, what it means is that it is getting ready to start effacing and to basically start opening up for dilation, which is needed, of course, in order to deliver vaginally. So she goes, okay, so this is the Thursday of week 36, and she says to me, okay, so this looks like, you know, I it may be this weekend or into next week, um, if I see you next week, I'm not gonna see you the week after. That's what she'll say. She's like, baby is fully engaged, which means that he's down in my vagina. So I was just like, whoa. That's... So I'm of course excited and I kind of like, I, I, I send messages to my prayer tree to be like, yo guys get ready because Maik is coming soon, you know. He, he's fully engaged, my cervix is soft. We're looking like it's gonna happen soon. All right, the weekend comes and goes. All right, that did say it probably wouldn't be the weekend, but I'm thinking, yeah, man, definitely I'm gonna go into labor. So I'm now week 37, right? Nothing happens, and I'm just like, all right, that's cool. But remember, he's engaged. Now, part of the thing with him being engaged is that I literally can feel him. So at this point, I stop working out because it's uncomfortable. Even walking is kind of uncomfortable. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. I go back in to Doc, she goes, oh wow, all right, so I'm half expecting her to say, yeah man, we've started dilating, and I'm just like, yeah, she's gonna tell me to go to the hospital, everything good. Nope. Cervix still soft, no dilation, he's still engaged, and I'm just like, really Doc? And she's like, don't worry. She says to me, it's definitely gonna be this week, don't worry. And I'm just like, okay, cool. All right, let's go. By this time, I decided that I'm gonna take my leave um, I'm gonna start my maternity leave just because I was so exhausted with work. I couldn't manage. I wasn't sleeping well at night I didn't sleep in my bed for the last two weeks of my pregnancy because it was so uncomfortable I'd wake up halfway through the night crying just being in pain and uncomfortable I literally slept upright in the rocking chair for two whole weeks, which was horrible But it was the only way that I could actually get some rest so at this point, I'm still expressing colostrum and looking back, I realized now that that was probably why I started having contractions. So I would have contractions in the night and I would start timing them and thinking, yeah, man, this is it. And then nothing would happen. They just subside by morning and it was really hard emotionally to be constantly thinking this is it this is it and then nothing happens and my doc is telling me Paige if I see you next week I'll be surprised we're not going to make an appointment that's what she says to me right we're not going to make an appointment and I'm just like okay all right cool you sure doc and she's like no ma, we're not going to make an appointment next week comes and I am still pregnant and so I go in and again I'm expecting doc to say to me you're dilating, go to the hospital. Nothing. By this point, I am a wreck emotionally. I am crying to Marcus because I'm just like, I just want my eat to come. I'm just, I'm ready for him to be here, you know? And I remember feeling like God had forgotten me. I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but after week 36, I got very quiet on social media, partially because I didn't want to share what was happening at the time. 
because emotionally I knew that where I was it wasn't a good place and I love you guys so much but I also couldn't deal with persons asking me is he here yet it was just hard that every time somebody asked and that my aunt would be no you know that nothing had changed I remember I have already kind of preempted my prayer tree so everybody's on alert so everybody's checking in and looking back I kind of wish I hadn't done that because it ended up being that I was bombarded by questions and the answer was always the same that no nothing has happened no I'm still here <laughs> I'm still pregnant you know and it was frustrating to me and I think I even ended up saying some hurtful things to people who I loved out of my frustration I go back in for my appointment and doc says to me oh wow <laughs> still no dilation and she's like all right Paige, don't worry it's gonna happen this weekend and i said doc at this point i don't even believe you that's what i said to her. i said i don't believe you because it keeps on looking that way and then it just doesn't happen and i just i can't get my hopes up anymore so again i don't set an appointment for the follow-up week by this point i'm not sleeping at night i'm walking i am crying in the middle of the night trying not to wake marcus because I'm in so much physical pain. Walking hurts, getting out of a chair hurts, lying down hurts, showering hurts. I was just physically so uncomfortable. And each night I would be having contractions, start timing them and then they would just peter off and nothing would happen. So physically I'm exhausted, emotionally I'm exhausted and I'm at a point where I'm just like, I just want him in my arms. I was supposed to have an appointment the Thursday, but me with my anxious self the Tuesday, I call and I'm just like, Doc, can I just come in tomorrow? She says, all right, sure, no problem. I wake up the Wednesday morning and I don't feel my ache moving. And I kind of go, Marcus, Marcus, I wake him up because this is about seven o'clock. I said, Marcus, do you remember the last time I said my ache was moving? He's like, no, not really. He's half asleep. But he's like, he can't remember. I jump out of bed and I immediately go to the fridge. I get an ice cold glass of water. I down it and normally that would get him to like kick or whatever. Nothing. I said, Paige, don't freak out, don't freak out, don't freak out. I go and I literally mix sugar and water. I gob that down to try and see if it will jolt him. Nothing. I sit down and I used to be able to like if I push him he would kind of kick me back to say stop pushing me mommy I push him I move I push I push nothing he doesn't respond and I run into the bedroom and I say Marcus take me to the hospital no I'm ready take me no luckily I was already registered at the hospital and because of that once you go there you say decrease fetal movement they automatically hook you up to a monitor to check the baby's heart rate and make sure that everything is okay as they hook me up my kicks exactly where the monitor goes and I literally just take a gulp of air because I'm like that god the whole time I'm driving I'm just praying god please let him be okay please let him be okay please let him be okay Heart rate was normal, everything was normal. He just hadn't woken up and he wasn't in the mood to wake up. That's all it was. What they do is that they run the heart monitor for half an hour and they create like this strip of paper which shows his heartbeat. It's called a strip. And they go, all right, so you're just gonna take the strip to your dog since you have an appointment with her later this morning. Cool. I go into my doc and first thing she does is she takes my pressure. And my pressure is high. And she goes, oh gosh, patient, come on, calm down. Cause she figures it's because of all of the up and down from the morning she says come on calm down whatever she takes again it's still high she goes all right so we're gonna proceed and i'm gonna examine you and then if it's still high then we have to make a decision because the only way to get rid of pregnancy induced hypertension is delivery and so if we sit down waiting on it to go back down it's not gonna go back down what's basically gonna happen is you're gonna be at risk for pre-eclampsia I go, all right, we go and she examines me. Service is still soft, baby's still engaged, no dilation. All this time I'm praying and I'm just like, God, I don't want to be induced. Please just 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 let my pressure go down. And as I sit down, I, I pray. I remember this sickly saying, God, if it is your will that now is not the time for my to come, 
please let my pressure have gone back down. She takes some measurements and my pressure is higher than the last two times, like by 20. So it was a lot higher. And she goes, go home, pack your bags, and meet you at the hospital. So alright, in my head I'm just like, induction is what I wanted, but yay, I get to see him, I get to finally meet him, no problem, I'm ready, I am ready to do this. We go home, we get my stuff, we pack the bags, we take last picture with him inside me, and we head to the hospital. So at about 4.30 they induce me, and they start with the first dose, and I kind of go to them, alright, cool. So in terms of us tracking this, how does this work? And they explain the whole thing to me and they go, don't worry, when you start feeling contractions, you'll know. Hi hey, baby boy, one day you will see this. And I just want you to know how much we love you. This wasn't quite how we wanted to start. But above all, we're trusting God and I hope that you will one day understand that. Above all, we know that God's will is perfect. Your mom is trying to be strong for you. And I'm hoping I can. I'm hoping I'm enough. Your daddy says I am. More than enough. <laughs> I just keep telling myself that soon you'll be in my arms and it will be worth it. I just want you to know how loved you are. So that goes on for another two hours and I do start to feel crampy. I say to them, can I get anything for the cramping? Because I know that I have to wait until I'm four centimeters for the epidural. But they say, yes, they can give me something for the cramping, which I actually found to be more difficult to deal with than the contractions themselves. They give me something for the cramping and it knocks me out. I just go to sleep. Again, I'm not in the bed because of course lying down is not comfortable, so I'm in the chair and I fall asleep. I wake up to the sound of my hospital room door opening and Doc comes in and she's like, you're asleep? You, you can't be having contractions then if you're asleep. And I go, I think I am having contractions. She's like, Paige, you could not be having contractions and you're asleep. Marcus says, well Doc, she has been moaning in her sleep. In hindsight, I think that because I had been having contractions for the past two weeks, I had learned to sleep through them. That's really what was happening. So she goes, alright, I'm gonna examine you and let's see where we're at. She examines me and I'm only one and a half centimeters dilated and this is at 11.30 in the night. I was induced from 4.30. She goes, alright Paigey, I'm gonna take you to two. That's what she says. I'm just like, huh? She goes in and she sweeps my membrane and I literally go, Ooh. if you don't know, sweeping your membrane means that they basically, alright, how do I explain this? They stick hands up and they go like this around your is it the cervix or the whatever they go around they sweep the membrane ow so doc does that and she breaks my water as she breaks my water she goes there's meconium in your water and i instantly even though i'm groggy i get up and i go take him take him doc take him take him take him take him my husband is just like, what's wrong, what's wrong, why you, what happened? Because he doesn't know what meconium is. So my doc is like, Paige, calm down, calm down, but I can't calm down. So if you don't know, meconium is basically the baby's stool that has been stored up during the time that the baby's in the womb. It's not supposed to be passed until the child is born. And if it's passed while in the womb, it can, um, if they inhale it, then you can have them inhaling toxins and that can damage their lungs. So of course I'm not worried that something is happening to my ego and I'm just kind of like, just take him please. She calls the nurse in and she says, nurse, I'm just going to ask you to just look at the ink pad that was below me. She says, just look at it and tell me what you see. Nurse looks at it and she goes, that's my cornea. And doc says, all right, thank you for the confirmation. Looking back, I'm really grateful that my doc did that because it allowed me to even trust her more because I realized that she was, she wanted it to be known that it wasn't just her saying, let's go to C-section because she knew I really wanted to deliver vaginally. She wanted the second person to confirm to be like, you know, it's not just something that I'm saying on a whim. This is really what happened. Meconium in your water means that your baby is basically in distress. 
and at this point my dog says to me Paige I know you want to deliver vaginally but the thing is if we have meconium in your water it means that the baby's in distress and you're only at two centimeters now so we don't have enough time for him to be sitting in the meconium we have to go to c-section and I said alright doc let's go they wheel me up um, it ends up being that I am wheeled to the same operating theater so where I was actually delivered by my mom because I was c-section as well and Marcus comes up he has his camera he's in his scrubs and we go in and I remember that the time it took between them saying we're going to surgery and doing everything to prep me it was about half an hour and in that time i started having contractions like like whoa and i was just like doc i'm i'm in labor like i'm having contracts and she's like what we get into the operating room and they're trying to bend me over in order for them to stick me to numb my lower half and i can't bend over i go doc i cannot bend over she said what do you mean and i said he's down there i can't bend over and she's like no let me check you she checks me and by this time i have jumped to almost three centimeters right in the space of half an hour that makes it kind of sad looking back because it's just like man if there was a meconium it means that i would have just been progressing into labor naturally and it would have happened quickly so she goes Paige it's still not enough we'll have to take him now I said all right sure so they find a way to get me all the way over to inject me in my back and it goes numb they put up this sheet and I'll just warn you um, c-section is kind of traumatizing mentally because the sheet has a lot of lights behind it and so you actually can see movement you know you can't see and you feel your body kind of like being tugged as they're because they're pulling apart layers of skin and fat and muscle and you just feel your body <laughs> it's so honestly and there's a clock to my left and I remember looking at it and Marcus is at my right and I'm looking at the clock and I go it's taking too long where is he Marcus is he okay but I don't want Marcus to look because I know that would probably freak him out and I'm just like is, is he okay is everything okay and they're not answering me and I'm freaking out that they're not answering me and looking back now I realized that they were just busy doing their job and they didn't hear me but I thought it meant that something was wrong so I'm now crying because I'm just like is he out is he okay is he okay and then at 1 43 a.m my comes out and doesn't cry and the pediatrician just gives him a little tap and he goes ah! and goes to cough so he really is a chill baby from birth he just let up one little sound and then was content and they brought him over to me and my world was just changed you mean you guys you'll see the picture I I could breathe knowing that he was okay you know I look back on my story and even now months later I am sad that I didn't get to push I am um, there are moments where I feel like a failure even though I know I'm not there are moments where I feel like I was robbed of something I had worked so hard for I had worked so hard for the whole pregnancy you know I had done everything I'd had the most uncomplicated pregnancy you know like I, I should have been able to have a vaginal delivery and I still feel robbed and some days I wish I could go back and not set the appointment early you know some days I wish I had waited until Thursday to go in maybe my pressure wouldn't have been as high and maybe if I hadn't needed to be induced, he wouldn't have been in distress and we wouldn't have had meconium in, in the water. You know, it's just, there's so much to think about. But on the flip side, I look at it and I go, what if my pressure had been going up and I didn't know? And one day later would have been too late. I would have gone to preeclampsia. What if uh, he was already in distress from uh, before and I just didn't know it and he was in the meconium and I didn't know it that would have been a whole other day you know I look at it and I think doc wasn't supposed to come until one o'clock in the morning to deliver me and she decided to just come early had she not come early he would have been sitting 
in the Mekonia for another two hours. I look at all of these things and I go, who is like unto God? Which is the meaning of my ex name. The fact is that it didn't go as I planned and it's a perfect example of no matter how much you plan, at some point you have to just trust that God is in control and that he will work it out how he's supposed to work it out. Am I disappointed? Yes. Still to this day, I have moments where I cry because I wish I had delivered vaginally. And C-section recovery is hard. It's hard. But I'm so grateful to God that he allowed me to deliver my ache. He allowed Max and I to be gifted with him. He came, he was healthy, there was no issues with his lungs. He was perfect. And all I can say is God's grace was very present with us throughout that entire experience. So even if it didn't go according to plan, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that God was with us through it all and that my baby boy is here safe and is thriving. So that is my birth story. I know it has been a while for me to share it and it just took me some time to actually be able to say it um, and to voice how I feel about it because you don't want to seem ungrateful for the fact that you know you have a healthy baby. There are so many people who lose a child or the mother in childbirth and we're both here safely saying, so, you know, why, why are you complaining Paige, you know, like be grateful and I am. But it's just to encourage you that if you are on your way to being a mom and you know you're looking at the option you want to have vaginal i really encourage you to just prep your mind that if it comes to an emergency c-section that you don't feel disappointed in yourself and that you know that you know once a baby's here safe that's all that matters once you are safe that's all that matters at the end of the day it doesn't matter how the child comes it doesn't matter if your birth plan goes exactly as you laid it out as long as that baby and you are okay that's all that matters thanks so much for being a part of my journey as a mom and as naturally page and I hope you guys will like this video. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notifications. And I look forward to sharing more of my journey here on Mama Mondays. Bye guys.